Hi people, welcome to the Run Testers and in this video we are putting two big stacked max cushion trainers up against each other. We've got the ASICS Gel Nimbus 26 that were kindly sent to us by sportsshoes.com. That has some minor tweaks to the uppers and the outsole and that's going up against the ever popular New Balance 1080 V13. Now these are both billed as good do-it-all daily trainers with a tilt towards the plush and cushioned. The New Balance is a long-standing veteran that's somewhat been rethought for 2023. Well, the Nimbus 26 mainly follows an if it ain't broke approach to upgrades. So which one is best? Well, we've clocked the miles in both of them to find out. So here's our video on the ASICS Gel Nimbus 26 versus the New Balance 1080 V13. So head to head. Let's get into it. Quick design details then, well the ASICS Gel Nimbus packs 41.5 mils in the heel, 33.5 in the forefoot for an 8 mil drop. The New Balance 1080 V13 has 38 mils in the heel, 32 in the forefoot for a 6 mil drop. When it comes to weight in our UK 8.5 test size, the Nimbus 26 weighs in 11.1 ounces or 314 grams. The New Balance coming at 9.2 ounces or 260 grams. The ASICS Gel Nimbus are going to cost you £180 or $160, while the New Balance are going to come in at £160 or $165. So shoe comparison, let's start with the midsoles then. Well, the Nimbus 26 midsole remains largely the same with a big and wide stack of Flight Foam Blast plus Eco Foam that's made with 20% bio-based content. It's tuned medium soft to soft, but with a bit of rebound. There's also this pure, familiar kind of pure gel heel insert here, which is a section of springy rebounding material that's there to create soft landings with maximum impact absorption in around the heel area. You also get a rocket midsole geometry that aims to smooth those transitions. The New Balance 1080, meanwhile, now has a bigger midsole stack of new lighter Fresh Foam X with a lower drop, an updated rocker shape as well, some extra forefoot stiffness here and a decent drop in overall weight. The midsole platforms here are quite similar in width, but the Nimbus are noticeably longer as the shoes. Up top, the Nimbus 26 features new engineered stretch knit uppers, the same big padded heel collars here and stretchy knitted and gusted tongues that you saw on the old one. There's also an update to the lace eyelets. They've got a more robust design that's there to help create a more supportive midfoot hold and they probably should beef up the durability as well. The 1080 V13 also has engineered mesh uppers that offer a wrapped fit overall. The heel collars and the gusted tongues are generously padded for boosted plushness and good stepping comfort for that luxe on foot feel. And that comfort now definitely rivals the Nimbus 26 overall. If you flip them both over, the Nimbus 26 has changed the outsole. You now have a hybrid of ASICS grip and AHAR rubber. The coverage is about the same as the previous generation, but there's now these kind of little studs here to provide a bit of extra grip. The V13 has a generous outsole covering of New Balance's endurance rubber for boosted grip and durability as well. So I had a UK9 for both of these shoes, which actually means they're slightly different sizes because with ASICS, a UK9 is a US 10, and with New Balance, a UK9 is a US 9.5. So as you might expect, New Balance has a slightly closer fit if you're going by UK sizes, but actually both are completely fine for me in that my normal running shoe size, enough room in the toe box. The ASICS, like I say, is a bit roomier if you're looking at UK sizing, and then you've got a lot of padding around the heel and midfoot, which means you get a nice secure fit around there in both shoes of no slippage laterally on the run. So yeah, all good in my normal size. So when it comes to fit, I ran in a UK eight and a half in both shoes in the us that means the new balance was a nine the asics gel nimbus was a nine and a half it's also slightly bigger the nimbus in the eu sizing i think 43 and a half to 43 i think and yeah basically what you're getting here is the nimbus and the uh, nb 1080 they've both got nice hugging hold good fit good lockdown you know not those big padded heel collars and cushioning hold the feet firmly in place i think there's good protection into the heels. I don't get any heel slipping. Yeah, you've got big padded tongues that stop lace pinch. You can get a good lock down across the midfoot. If there's one thing that's gonna be different here, I think the Nimbus 26 come up ever so slightly longer in the toes. There's a bit more room lengthwise, maybe a little bit more volume across the top of the toes as well. But overall, I had no problem with the sizing in both of these. I think maybe if you want a little bit more of a compact ride, taking you know, half an inch off the top of the Nimbus might be of benefit. I've not run in a half a size down in those, but that might change the ride slightly. Uh, just make them feel a little bit more compact, which is something I'll come on to later. But overall, I recommend going true to size in both of these.
So Joe number 26 and the 1080 V13 are both shoes that I would consider very much comfort focused shoes that I'd only really use for easy runs, long runs, that kind of thing. I've done some slightly faster stuff in both of these shoes and one workout in the Joe Nimbus uh, and I didn't really enjoy it. It's not really the kind of thing these shoes are designed for. Their aim is really to put a lot of foam between you and the pavement to deliver a comfortable ride that helps just ticking through uh, daily training miles. Now, I did find the ride was fairly different between them though and the 1080 V13 is a bit of a departure from previous versions of the shoe for me in that it's a lot softer underfoot the new Fresh Foam X formulation, uh, which has the same name as on previous models. New Balance doesn't change the name of its foams, no matter how much it changes them. Uh, it does feel a lot softer and squishier underfoot and a little bit wobblier as well. It's not quite as stable and, I'd say, responsive as the foams you had on previous 1080s, which weren't my favourite shoes in the world, but they were probably more cushioned daily trainers to me in that they were a bit more versatile because it had a slightly firmer feeling underfoot. You could run a little bit quicker in them. With the 1080, I found that it really was a shoe that I just used for easy stuff because you did sink in quite a lot into this foam. It is very comfortable as a result, but... That not giving you much back means that I tended to not enjoy it too much for long runs or anything vaguely quick. Like, I, you know, it is comfortable for those runs, but I prefer probably a slightly firmer, more balanced platform if I'm going to go long in a shoe just because I just feel like I was wading a little bit through the vast amount of foam on the shoe at times when I was going on longer runs. Now, the Nimbus is a bit more balanced. It is a soft shoe for sure, but, but it's not as soft as the New Balance. The, the foam here in the midsole gets a little bit more back. It's got probably a slightly more smooth ride as well. It's a bit of a rocker, I noticed, with this shoe. And I do find it a really good long run shoe because of that. It does tick through those miles really nicely. It's comfortable. It's certainly more stable than New Balance, I would say, and that gives you a little bit more of a feeling of support on those longer runs. Like, it's still not a versatile shoe by any means, and it's actually a fair bit heavier than the New Balance. So when I did do a fast workout on it, it didn't feel particularly good just because it's such a big, unwieldy shoe, and it's not really set up to really push you on to your toes like you'd expect for a shoe like that but as a comfortable cushion cruiser it does the job now the new outsole on the latest version of the shoe i have found is a bit slappier than the previous model of the shoe and it's a bit harder it's designed to give the shoe better grip but i did find that i got a little bit of forefoot discomfort when running fast in the shoe or even actually when running long just noticed it a bit more than on the previous models didn't find it quite as comfortable so i think from a pure comfort point of view i guess the squishiness of the new balance just gives it the edge on that front and the fact it is pretty light means you can pick up your feet in it okay if you are going to do a short fast workout but overall i'd say they're probably similarly versatile which is to say not very versatile at all and it's really just a slightly different ride for you. you've got here you've got the much squishier feeling of the new balance the firmer more balanced and more stable platform of the asics which i probably on balance slightly prefer for longer runs in particular but over those short easy cruises that the comfort of the new balance i think is a little bit higher so then for my run test i've done more than 50 kilometers in both of these shoes mostly easy plodding some runs up to 90 minutes on feet that's a mix of road and light off-road river paths I found them good for those easy efforts where you just want to be, uh, you know, you want a bit, a bit of reliable protection and all round plushness on the foot. I also did a side by side mile with one shoe on each foot to get a better sense of the differences between the shoes. And this is what I found. So I've just done a side by side mile with a new balance on the left foot. I've got the ASICS Joe Nimbus on the right foot. I think my feelings about these two shoes are probably the same as they were when we did the head to head between the 25, the Nimbus 25 and the NB 1080 V13. That video is on the channel somewhere you can find that. And that is that both of these are going to deliver that, you know, plush, soft, cushioned, padded ride that's going to basically take the road out from underneath your feet. It kind of eats up all of that impact and puts a big pillowy, soft cushion between the two. You get that from both of these shoes in absolute spades. There's loads of it. They're very comfortable. They're very soft. They're very cushioned. They're very good for those easy plodding miles, if that's what you like in your shoes. And then, to be honest, when it comes to that sort of comfort and road eating, you know, impact sort of... Um, absorption i don't think there's a huge amount to choose between these two shoes to be honest they perform pretty much the same i think the comfort overall on the foot is on a par as well when you're thinking about how the heel collars hold and about the how the uppers wrap and you know the overall room and the feel and the fit on the foot yeah these are very similar shoes to me that's how they feel they'll do very similar jobs and i'm going to split hairs but when i'm running like that i think the main difference here is that i think the nimbus feel a bit heavier you notice it I, less compact they're just a little bit less agile and overall i think they feel a little bit less natural on the foot they disappear a bit more than you get from the nimbus 26 that might be down to that extra length that i'm getting in the nimbus i think there's a sort of precision and a, and a, and a sort of compactness that comes with the mb 1080 that i like a little bit more i'm also put off a little bit from the nimbus by the sort of slappy outsoles that i just find it a bit interruptive in my run i'm very aware of it i don't know why i have sort of fixate on it because probably you can just ignore it but it seems to sort of seep into my run i notice it the sensation and the sound it just makes me think about my shoes which is something that i'm not really wanting to do the new balance don't so yeah overall i think i much prefer the new balance 1080 
These are both pretty solid max cushion shoes all round. Neither are like a real big favourites of mine. They're not ones I put in my rotation myself. But if you're picking between them, I'd say there is a difference in ride feel here to note. Both pretty expensive, both do a similar job. But the New Balance is the softer shoe for sure. And it gives you that squishy feeling underfoot, which some people like and some people won't. I found it probably just a little bit too squishy and wobbly for my taste at times, especially over longer distances. In the Asics, you've got the more balanced platform. You've got a little bit more stability. Uh, it's not quite as soft and light as New Balance though. And it's still not you know really very versatile shoe. But I think if I was just ticking through my miles uh, especially over long distances i prefer the feeling of the asics myself just because it does have that more stable balanced platform so overall i'd probably just give the edge to the asics gel nimbus uh, 26 i probably prefer the gel nimbus 25 myself but the new balance is there if you do want a pure very soft feeling underfoot and aren't worried about it being too squishy verdict then and i found it a tough one to call between the nimbus 25 and the new balance 1080 v13 last gen it's largely the same deal here with this one with the updated nimbus 26 based on my test i found the ride of these shoes to be incredibly similar as easy day recovery shoes goes, I think these are pretty well matched in all the key areas with all the things that you'd look for in a max cushioned comfort shoe. The step in comfort is about even. They both deliver good cushion protection that makes the road kind of disappear. If anything, I'd say that the Nimbus are a shade more responsive. There's a touch of extra return in the midsole and the rocker clips you through a little quicker. But it's margins and I think that the slappy outsole on the Nimbus eats into some of the smoothness of the ride. And I think weighing things up on performance to sort of price value that you get here, I don't really see much reason to spend the extra on the Nimbus over the 1080s. So if I'm going to be choosing between these two big cushion running shoes, I'd still go for the 1080 V13, partly because it's a bit cheaper, partly because to me, it just feels a little bit more natural. Maybe that's the extra length that you get in the Nimbus as well. Just a bit more compact in the 1080. So that's the one that I would be going for. I'd choose the New Balance 1080. So there you have it. That's our head-to-head -head between the Gel Nimbus 26 and the new 1080 V13. We hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments below. If you've had the chance to run in either or both of these shoes, we'd love to hear how you found them. How did you found the sizing? What have you found with those long runs that you've done in them? Let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell for more great run testers videos when they land. If you want a full review of both of these shoes, those videos are appearing on the channel just about now. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again soon on the Run Testers. Happy running, people.